My role today is to provide a legal perspective, maybe not popular at times. Um, I wanted to start this morning with our 10 minutes. Blue sky, from the industry's perspective, when you speak to a lawyer, is typically to maximize revenues. So whether it's a product launch, whether you are at the twilight of your product and, mar and patents are expiring, whether you are a logistics company, the pharmacy distributing the product, generally you want to maximize your revenues and your interaction with a lawyer is often, how do you get me there? What can you do to help me on those questions? So today, I wanted to highlight for you five areas of adversity that we see daily. And they fit into that big picture regarding maximizing your revenues. Each of these five topics, we could have a whole morning just on individual topics in this area. But I wanted to flag them for you and highlight what the key areas are in these subsections. So we talked today about the pharma industry as a punching bag in terms of legal issues. That's not really the case. So although we have a variety of topics here that can be challenging, most of these topics are actually maneuverable and we can get you there. The question is how in view of the changing landscape. So first, privacy laws. We spoke this morning about data, accessing patients, accessing physicians. In an ideal world, maximizing revenue, a company would know what the patient's diseases are, what drugs they need, how they use the drugs, how we can leverage that to sell more to them. The difficulty, of course, is collecting that data, using data that we may have collected 10 years ago for that purpose, understanding physicians' preferences and some of their personal information and recording it is all governed by privacy laws and there are restrictions. The general rule is that if a person consents, you can use the data. So the real trick is to make sure that when you're collecting the data, they understand that you may use it for a whole bunch of purposes, you may sell it, and if they don't want to consent to that, fine, they're off the list. But the ideal is to get a consent in advance to give yourselves flexibility. I wanted to highlight privacy breaches. It's going to happen in workplace. Here's one example, simply from a hospital perspective, of where records have been disclosed. There's now a class action on regarding the, the privacy breach. And so the takeaway here is that the new age of data, we will have access to personal information. We can leverage that. We want to prepare ourselves for possible breaches and possible ways to use that data. Second topic that we see a fair bit in the legal sphere, pricing laws. And you're living this day to day, whatever your perspective is. So we have the federal PMPRB, we've got CDR and CADF, the new PCPA. Overlying that, we've got agreements and Quebec requiring best available price undertakings. We have agreements with private payers, public payers. The landscape is changing. And faced with that, we have patients lobbying to try to get access to drugs. So a lot of conflicting inputs. Is it maneuverable? Absolutely. Is it a headache or is it an opportunity? Some would say in jurisdictions where all laws have been zeroed in with a single approach, such as Australia, single payer system, for example, that ability to bargain is more restricted. So here's our polling question. Does our current approach provide an opportunity or a challenge for market penetration? 
challenge. Patient access is another topic I would like to address today. The backdrop to this is the Canada Health Act, which you will see provides an assurance of reasonable access, not guaranteed access. So from a patient access perspective, the difficulty is that patients learn that drugs are available in other markets, such as the US. They are inquiring, why can't we get these drugs in Canada? Why can't we get them at a price to which we're entitled to get the drugs? And so this is another challenge that we have that really intersects not only with the Canada Health Act, but with pricing and reimbursement. Yet another area, of course, is patents. And you may know that Canada currently is regarded as an outlier regarding some of our positions on patents. Well, how does that affect the industry? If patents are invalidated or fall away, of course, that increases competition. So there's a real tension for the companies who own the patent to try to uphold them. You may be aware of Lilly's trade challenge, the recent comments by the CEO of AbbVie regarding Canada's patent position. So currently we're on the watch list, but the question here is, do patents actually have an impact on your market success? Yes or no? Good to know. The US patent industry really regards Canada as an outlier currently. The seat of trade negotiations are helping somewhat, but not regarding patents that have already issued and which are being challenged daily in courts and uh, by competitors. The last topic in terms of the, the legal challenges that we can face from time to time really is product liability class actions. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, Canada was nowhere near as litigious as the US. That's changing. And there's a challenge for us in the drug industry because drugs by their nature have adverse effects. And there can be supply issues. For example, the recent Apotex supply issue from India, it happens. How do you communicate those risks to your customers, to your patients, and yet still maximize revenues? And if you don't communicate those risks, Will that bite you at some stage with product liability, class actions, for example? So that is the fifth issue that we often face as lawyers working closely in the pharma industry. So to summarize, we've dealt with five big topic issues, each of which could have their own sessions. And on that note, I'd like to ask you, do we lawyers have more fun than pharma execs? <laughs> I have 56% of the crowd who would like to be a lawyer. Welcome. Thanks very much.